everybody. I just thought I'd uh, <coughs> take you out on my uh, morning run this morning. So uh, what a lovely spring day. Isn't it great to uh, be in a moment right now where we can see not only the season changing in, in the physical, but um, in the spiritual, you know, as we uh, transition out of what has been a crazy year, a crazy pandemic, and uh, we move into what I feel and sense in my spirit is a season of hope, a season of renewal, uh, a season of God's next move for us. So, you know, as we praise and worship and uh, gather this morning on YouTube, let's just uh, in our hearts lift up a, a shout of praise to God for thanking him for getting us to this place where we have vaccines and we have a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel. So let's dedicate this morning just to praising God and lifting up his name. So here we go. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph oh, My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you Turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You 
done it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Hello again. Do you remember this? few weeks ago now I know but hopefully you can remember what I started speaking about when it came to the shape of you. There's a song in that somewhere. But what makes you who you are? Something you need to figure out if you're going to accept who you're made to be. What makes you who you are? Is it your looks? Some of us put a lot of time into our looks. Some of us more than others, you know who you are. Clearly not me. Now, I don't think it is our looks because you can change everything about the way you look. Some people spend a lot of money changing the way they look, making their lips bigger, making their bums bigger, making other parts of their bodies bigger, sometimes smaller but it doesn't affect the person that they are inside, really. They can play to it, they can play to the way that they look, but it doesn't actually affect who they are inside. Now you see, I think what makes us who we are is our hearts. Now the heart is a weird thing. It's a very weird thing. You see, in biology, all our heart does is pump our blood around our body. It makes us live, it makes us move, it makes us breathe. It's, it's, it's the thing that keeps us alive. And if you don't believe in God, if you believe in evolution, if you believe that there is no higher power other than us, then that's all the heart does. But if you really sit down and think, there's something else going on there. And if you've been broken up with, which I have, a lot, you know that something hurts in your heart when that happens. If you've lost someone you love, if they've died, it hurts. And on the flip side, if, you, if you've found someone you love, if you've done anything at all that makes you really, really happy, this feels good too. So it can't just be a muscle that pumps blood around our bodies. There must be something going on there. And if there's something going on there, then we need to pay attention to it. You see, our hearts make us who we are. It can be our shape, if you like. If you've ever watched any type of sport, or gymnastics, or anything that requires a huge amount of physical training, you'll know that those people have coaches. I was watching the snooker finals last night, and I was watching the Six Nations last week with the rugby, and those people have coaches that can train them, and train them, and train them, so that their bodies can physically keep up to the task in hand. Now, I haven't played rugby at that level ever. I haven't even played it at club level. I've played it at school level. And when you get hit, it hurts. The forces that those players are on the, on the pitches in the Six Nations, I would just be obliterated into little tiny pieces. I couldn't cope with it because my body has not been trained to cope with it. And the coaches that those players have know exactly how to train the bodies to be able to deal with what they have to deal with. And likewise, in snooker, those players have to have such concentration to be able to do what they do, 
but they have to both physically and mentally be trained to be able to carry out that task. And again, something that I can't do. I haven't been trained. I don't have that level of concentration within me. In fact, I don't have much level of concentration within me. With gymnastics, it's the same thing again. Right from babies to Olympians, they are trained to be able to do what they are set out to do. But there's nothing training the heart. And you see, God, in his word, in the Bible, he teaches us how to train our hearts. He is our heart coach, our life coach. He does care a little bit about what you do with your bodies. And he explains that in there, but he cares more about what we do with our hearts because he knows, because he created us, that our hearts direct everything else that we do, both physically and spiritually and mentally. It's affected by what's in here. This directs what we do. So it's important that you learn and you read and you listen to how to train your heart. Now, I'm not going to sit here all morning and go through what God says about our hearts and where they are at. But that is the thing that makes you who you are. You see, where your heart is, is where your direction will be. And where your treasure is, is where your heart is. So think about what you value most in life. Does it line up with what God values? Or does it line up with what the world values? Because those two things cannot be together. Those are, will always be one or the other thing. If we line ourselves up with what God values, he will train our hearts more than you will ever be able to do yourself. And that is what makes you who you are.
precious love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow shawl you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Snow shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Snow shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Snow shadow you won't light mountain you won't climb up coming up to me snow wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming up to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh it chases me down fights till i'm found leaves the night couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Well, we've got a lot of great things coming up this week. Um, we've got Heart for the House on Wednesday at 7.30. So if you want to call Faith Church your home or Faith Church is your home, I just encourage you to go over to our website and there'll be a link to um, Heart for the House where it's our, our monthly kind of get together where we get to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts about what's happening at church and just to spend some time praying as a community into the things that we're doing and the things that are upcoming. So. If you want to be part of Faith Church or Faith Church is your home, I just want really to encourage you to join us on, on Google. Um, the link is on our website on Wednesday evening. Also, we have our life groups on Tuesday and we have our ladies' life group on Friday. So if you want to know more about them, just uh, drop Phil Gibson or Rich Foster uh, an email. So it's rich.foster at faithchurch.wales or phil.gibson at faithchurch.wales. So... <laughs>
Right, this is our new toilet. Just finishing off glossing the, the door frames. And um, we've got uh, bright coloured doors that go on every, every door, so it's going to look really cool. Um, so yeah, the project's come on really well. Uh, but we, we need to raise probably about another thousand pounds so that we can just do the finishing touches like hand dryers and toilets and uh, roll holders and those kind of things. So um, we're just asking whether people can partner with us as, as a church just to raise the, the final bit of money that we need just to make this uh, not just a good project, but a project that has a, a real sense of excellence about it. But I um, just want to thank Matt and Anthony and, and Corey, the, the plumbers, the electricians uh, and the carpenters that have uh, worked so hard to, to get this project done and, and looking forward to when we can all come back in the building and into the coffee shop uh, and use our new amazing toilets.
Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. I just want to share a quick thought before Helen comes and shares in more depth about communion this morning. And, you know, I've just ran up here, up on the top of uh, on the side of Macken Mountain. So just over three and a half miles uphill all the way. And it was a sacrifice and um, a pain and, and uh, suffering. And my knees are hurting, my ankles are hurting. And But when I get to be on the top of here, I get to look at this amazing view out over the Bristol Channel. And I was just thinking, you know, I'm here and I'm in awe of it, but am I in awe of what communion means? You know, um, have I allowed communion to become something that is so familiar in my life that I don't honor the sacrifice that Jesus made, that, that I can stand in the presence of God, that I can stand in the awe of the Almighty, you know, a sinner saved by grace. So I just encourage us, we got communion next week and Helen's about to bring a word to us is, you know, we, we as, a, as a church, as a community of faith, as we gather, need to make sure that we get communion um, in that sacred, reverent place that it needs to be, not something that we do once a month and it gives an opportunity for someone to share something, but, you know, we need to put it back in its the reverent place of, this is the Son of God who came to earth as a baby to live amongst us, uh, to experience everything of life as we experience to be betrayed by mankind but still choose the path of redemption for us as humanity and communion is is the way where i just honor that and i just remember that and i cement that back into my heart in in the right fearful reverence place that it needs to be so i think for us as faith church to enter into all that god wants us for 2021 i think one thing is we need to be thankful and the other thing is we need to gain back our reverence and our awe and our godly fear of the mightiness of God embraced by the grace that he won for us on the cross. Let's just sing another song before Helen just brings communion, uh, a message about communion to us this morning. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my richest gain i count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did a such love and sorrow meet? All thorns composed. So the crown were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so amazing so divine demands my my life, my own. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but lost. Hiya, so um, yeah, I'm Helen, I'm Mike's wife, um, he's asked me to share, I think he's going to share a bit later as well, and um, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about joy, the importance of um, having joy, um, 
I'm going to read a poem that I found and I thought this really relates to um, some of the things I want to talk about and then at the end I'm going to talk about communion and um, how communion relates to what I've spoken about and what it means for us communion. So first of all I thought I'd start with a poem because um, I heard this the other week and I really liked it. So the poem is by Anne Boss. When we lay the soil of our lives open to the rain of grace and let the joy of joy penetrate our cracked and dry places, let joy soak into our broken skin and deep crevices, life grows. How can this not be the best thing for the world, for us? Humbly let go, let go of trying to control, let go of my own ways, let go of my own fears, let go, blow his wind his trials, his oxygen, the joys of fire, leave the hand open and be at peace. Bend the knee, be small, let God give what he chooses to give, because he only gives. Love and a whisper of surprise thanks. This is the fuel for joy's flame. Fullness of joy is discovered only in the emptying of will, and I can empty because counting his grace has awakened me to how he cherishes me. Hold on passionately, he values me. I can empty because I am full of his love and I can trust him. When we give, we are trusting him and letting him fill us with goodness. Let us be generous, have generosity to people around us that will then reap joy in us. So, yeah, um, that poem I just thought um, there was just so much in it um, about us giving over to God so much of our lives um, basically offering to God us and opening up and letting go so um, I'm going to talk today about um, basically letting go um, that poem spoke about letting go of control I think sometimes um it's hard to do this and um, I think before we came here maybe it was easier because we were often moving so I just trust God more but getting more settled sometimes then you're not letting God lead as much so um, when we were moving around you were letting God lead but when you're in a place for so much longer you start to take more control but God's like let me lead let me be a part let me do what I need to do through you so um it's important to let god use us and like you know let his gifts be his gifts as well for the church and for others around us um so letting go um so basically as well i would think this relates at the moment to um a lot of people around us um yeah, there's been some hurt, some sorrow, because there's been sad news in the area. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to just hold on to that. But God's like, give it to me. Don't be, take it on yourself, but give it to me. Give me the hurt. Give me the sorrow. And let me just meet you where you are. Let me fill you. Um, yeah. Um, God wants us to use us. And um, he uses it he comes by trying to heal us as so as we let go and give him over things to him he will then try and fill that gap and fill us with his joy fill us with his patience and um i was reminded of um the verse about the fruits of the spirit that gives us patience he gives us joy he gives us um faith he gives us all those kindness you know he wants to fill us but if we don't allow space for him so in us that we all have like a little a shaped vacuum which is for Jesus and to come and live us and use us and be part of us but if we don't allow him to then we're we're trying to do things on our own on in our own strength but uh, we need to give to God everything and surrender to him for him to use us so this poem I really thought was a challenge because it's talking about your wounds giving him your wounds giving him your scars you know and letting him use those as a way of sharing with others or talking to others it's our testimony to others so um 
yeah, this poem talks about um, letting us give to him. And I was also reminded of um, the verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given unto us. Um, so if we seek him, he can give us what we need to get us through life through the trials, through the hardness. But if we don't surrender, then we're trying to do it on our own. But we need to be willing to just give everything to God. Let him be a part. Let him lead us. Um, emptying our will. Emptying our will leads to God's enabling to fulfil us. But if we don't surrender to him, he can't do that because we're holding on to that stuff. We're holding on to control. We're holding on to things and... You know, and as I talk today, I'm preaching to myself because, you know, I so often I find myself in the place where I'm trying to do everything. And and then it's times like this, you think, oh, no, I need to give it all to God. And, um, yeah, I think this lockdown time has just been a time to put the stop pause, the um, pause button and just make us think. Um, yeah, we need to trust him. Um Philippines 2, verse 13. Don't push your way to the front. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. So as we give ourselves and aren't selfish, he will help us to meet others' needs and help others. But if we're becoming too selfish and thinking about me, 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 that's when it becomes hard because God can't use us because we're just inward thinking. But as we look out, look at the people around us, look at the world around us. That's when God can say, give us a little push and say, yeah, I can use you now. I can use you. Just surrender to me. So um, that verse, don't push your way to the front, put yourself aside and help others get ahead. It's not about us. It's about helping others. And at this time um, when there's been sorrow in the area of um, really sad news, it's just been a time where I have thought, how can I help others? It's not about me. It's about the person that's hurting who was best friends with the family or the best friends with the child. And how can I support them? Um, what can I do to help them? If it's just a listening ear, just be the listening ear. If it's make them a meal, be the meal provider, you know. If someone's, you know, really needs that comfort, you know, maybe just ask them today, what do you need? And be that gap. And yeah, that's what Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to be hands and feet like he was in the world. Um, talked about, I wanted to talk about um, stop searching for yourself. But um, yeah, just su surrender to him, basically. Surrender to God. Letting go. Letting go of all of yourself. Letting God be in control. And that poem was all about that. Letting him be in control. Letting go of everything letting go of all those wounds, letting go of all that control, letting go of all the things we might hold on tight. We need to, if someone's hurt us, maybe, you know, today's the day you might need to forgive them and say, I forgive you. Don't hold on to that hurt any longer because um, the hurt just basically develops bitterness. But if we give it to God and say we're sorry or say to that person we're sorry, then that can reap joy in us we can get more of a peace in our lives because god can fill those places then that we've been holding on to stuff so um that brings us communion and it links in well with what i was talking about because it's communion is all about surrendering so i was going to read this scripture um isaiah 53 verse 2 um, my servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, never, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed, that weighed him down and he thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path 
to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. So basically that is about um, when um, we take communion and, um, well, it's about the cross that basically he took on our punishment and he died on the cross and um, he carried, he will carry our weaknesses. Like, you know, when he went to the cross, he went to the cross to die for us to lay it all at the cross and for us um, to forgive us of anything we do wrong and make things right. Um, so, you know, this is all about um, not being weighed down, but let God take it on the cross. And he died so we could be healed, so we could be, he could meet all our transgressions, all those things. Yeah, so... So the meaning of communion. Communion gives us wholeness. Um, so I thought I'd look up what wholeness meant. Wholeness means a state of forming a complete and harmonious whole. So basically being whole, being 100% whole. Um, and it also talks about um, unbroken and undamaged. So basically, as we come to communion, we're saying, God, we give you everything we come and we lay it at the cross and we remember you and we say lord we give you everything and as we let him come and meet us we're basically he's taking all the stuff that we shouldn't be holding and we're giving it to him and he's making us whole and he's making us right with him um it's also connecting us with god and so um we're coming and remembering, we're taking a minute to stop, think and think of the purpose, why we're here, why um, he died on the cross, um, think why he, yeah, laid his body on the cross for us. So um, a verse for communion, a good verse that we read is 1 Corinthians 25. This is my body in which I give for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So basically... He cut, He came and he shed his blood and he gave his body for us and he died on the cross so that we could come and we wouldn't, we could ask for forgiveness basically so we wouldn't be bearing any sins but we could be perfect in his sight. So um, yeah, the blood, um, he, the blood is a symbol of him washing our sins and um, cleansing us so as we take the wine or the juice that we take it's um cleansing us it's washing us clean so that we can be clean and um we can come to the cross and just say i give you everything i surrender to you um yeah and our body he gives to us as well and um as we partake in communion it's all about um us surrendering giving everything to god not holding anything back you know it might be a time you need to ask for forgiveness a time that you might need to say sorry for a few things but he can then come and fill you with his love and his strength for the next day and um communion is really a good time to just stop and pause and think what god did for us why he did die on the cross why we are here and i believe that this pandemic's been a bit of that uh stopping and pausing and thinking why are we here um why are we here and basically you know god god died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and some people don't know that yet so the reason we're here is to tell our people and share that and um and the only way we can do that is by being open and you know being you know demonstrating god's love maybe making that meal or um making that meal or visiting someone or just being a listening ear and um, when we come to communion, it makes us clean. Um, it's good to come to the cross to remember what he did for us, for dying for us, and he forgave us of all our sins. And as we let him into our lives, we will feel his joy and we'll feel more and more closer to God. Um, Um, yeah, so today, if there's anything you're thinking you need to give to God, you need to put at the cross, so just ask you today to just think what is it that you need to 
think of are there any wounds like in that poem that's talk about that you need to come and give to God is there any hurt is there anybody that you've hurt or maybe you know done wrong by this week um it's a time to come and just wipe the slate clean and say God I'm sorry and surrender to him and um yeah give everything to God and basically communion is about letting God be in control remembering that he is in control in control of everything in control of our lives in control of every day in control of our family um yeah and um a little thought um you know because some people think the church is a building but I think this time of us being in lockdown has made us realize that the church can be anywhere it doesn't have it's we don't have to buy a building to have a church you know we've done churches in our home so it's making us stop and think what church is the church is the people it's really not the building and um you know in our house because we've got teenagers we've had to say you know sometimes we won't make them all come but you know like the words Jay's done, the youth words and that, we've been getting them to come and sit and do that. And it doesn't even have to be a Sunday. Um, we've been doing it in the week, you know. So it's about not being religious and, yeah, letting the letting the time be God's when it's the right time for your family, for you as well. And the church is as it is the people. So um, I listened to a song this morning. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to listen to it, but... Um, yeah about casting crowns song about giving the storm to him and letting god take all our needs all our um things that we're struggling with and just giving the storms to him anything and today i just say um if you can find a song if we can't listen to this song then um if you can find a song to just listen to and just let god take all the things that are you may be holding on to today just give them to him like we talked about in communion that's the time of surrendering so just challenge you today what do you need to give to him what do you need to surrender and then as you come and do that you'll feel god's love god's joy god's the fruits of the spirit come and fill you afresh today and um come and fill you fully so um yeah, today I just challenge you, um, take a time to think. Maybe after this, just put some praise music on and just take time to reflect and think what is it you need to give to God today and surrender. And um, yeah, thank you for that. Right, I'll just finish with prayer. Yeah, dear Lord, just thank you for today. And I just pray that we will take that time to just find that song, that, you know, worship time to just give to you and surrender. And that today won't be about... Um, just listen to a message but we'll act upon it we will give everything to you we will surrender to you like the reason we do communion is to surrender i just pray any of those wounds like we talked about in the poem that we'll give to you any of those hurts if we need to forgive someone or that will help us today and i just pray that today we'll realize that when we're new with you today lord that we, you went to the cross for us and we don't have to carry any of these burdens and you know, it gets hard sometimes, but I just pray that we'll remember that it's all about you. It's not about us. And I'm reminded of that song, um, Jesus be the centre. And Lord, you just be the centre today. I just pray that it won't be about us, but it'll just be about you, Lord, that we'll let you be the centre of the church. You be the centre of our lives. You be the centre of our families. And um, as we do that, you'll just help us every single day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Forget you late at night I think of myself now what's right Breaks me up but you make me whole Lord would you hear the smoke cuts to the soul I find ways around the Think of things that might have been It loves me in, but you're my all 
Thanks for watching. Um, if any of you do fancy running 10Ks and 10 miles in the Welsh Hills, uh, give me a like and you can join me as long as you don't talk. But anyway, I don't talk much when I run up the hills. But um, thanks for watching this morning. Um, if you want to know any more about Faith Church, go to www.faithchurch.wales. Um, if you'd like to uh, know more about calling Faith Church your home, fill out the new to church uh, tab and some of my team will connect with you. Hey guys, we're looking to be back in the building in the next six weeks by Easter. So that's exciting. Tune in to Heart for the House on Wednesday and we'll just unpack that a little bit more with you. Um, stay safe, stay connected and uh, look forward to meeting up with you on Wednesday evening uh, or looking forward to meeting you in your life groups this week. Take care. See you soon. Two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> very, very, very thankful to yeah. be here with you guys today. This thing. Jesus.
because of who you are, my heart will give you praise. I'll be praising <laughs> Jesus. For everything you've done, my heart will celebrate. Come on, sing with us this morning. <laughs> because of who you are, my 